Blah, y'all already know what it is. Your boy Yakob, what's up? And your boy Hami from the Outlet to Reality, the best, hottest podcast in Vegas and Chicago. You know, um, so anyways, let's get started. How's my boy Hami doing? How was your weekend? Oh, good. I am exhausted. A lot of sitting around, a lot of doing nothing. How about you? Man, dude, to be honest, I, I got a funny story to share with you. So Thursday, I actually had a date. Oh, date night. Yeah, it was really nice. It wasn't supposed to be a date. It was supposed to be a consultation. <laughs> so let me tell you what happened. So I made this friend, right, from a party a while back in March. And basically, she needed me to basically give advice on, like, cars, like buying a car. So I told her about, you know, you should check out this car dealership. And basically we set up a day and time and she's like, okay, let's, uh, let's make it happen. I said, okay, cool. So when we got there, interesting enough, like my job is literally in the same building, just on the other side. So I'm thinking this is the best thing it's about to go. So when the time comes, she gets, she sends me a message saying that, Basically, she can't know that she left already. So she went there early and she left her. And I was like, what? I said, what was the point being like having me be like your advisor in a way and you just left? So, dude, I was kind of bummed out. I'm not going to lie. And then she hit me with the message. Are you down to go out to eat? To make up for it. Yeah, so I'm thinking, okay, let's make a couple moves and let's make it happen. So she picked the spot. I meet her over there. It's called Rachel's Kitchen. I've never been there. They're known for, like, the best mac and cheese, right? So I get to my date, right? I'm looking fly, still looking like I just got out of work. And I see her. And I'm not going to be – I'm not going to lie. She was outside sitting down. And I go, like, right behind her. And I said, what's up? Like that. Tell me why, I mean, it was the wrong girl. <laughs> oh, no. And, dude, she was looking <laughs> cute. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I literally thought you were my date. And she goes, um, how does she look? I'm like, she kind of looks like you. I'm not going to lie. And I was really excited it was going to be you. And she said, well, hopefully she comes. I'm like, yeah, if she doesn't come, like, it's going to be kind of, like, it's going to suck. So she was like, you know what? If she doesn't come, you can always sit next to me. I said, I'll stay, I'll stay. <laughs> Hit it with the right. Hit it with the right. I was so happy, man. I was really feeling good. So I have a plan B now. So just in case this girl doesn't show up again, I could go with plan B and make a couple boots. So she finally gets there, bro. Dude, they're wearing almost the same outfit, bro. That's the funny part. She comes in with a black looking, like a black jacket. I forgot what she had and she was looking fly. And I see her give her a hug. We're going in and it's time to pay, right? I'm thinking she's going to pay for my meal, right? Because she technically stood me up at the car dealership. We get there and she doesn't pay my meal. But here's the funny part. We get to the date. We're sitting down. We're about to eat. I put my mask on, bro. The one of the biggest mistakes you don't do in the in the date is say this, hey girl, I gotta keep my mask on because I haven't ate all day and I feel like my breath stinks. <laughs> so I put my inside, I have to keep it on to protect you and me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She starts laughing. She's like, You're goofy. I'm like, yeah, you know, I I, I couldn't help it. But we keep going with the conversation. I'm not lying gets interesting she's trying to get to know me my background everything and bro I'm, I'm not lying she's real pretty but here's the thing I, I get my mac and cheese I start eating it we're talking and bro after this she's like hey let's go outside so the restaurant's about to close we go outside we're chilling still we're talking I'm making her laugh we like click I feel like we click and then check this out 
uh, she tells me, hey, I got to get going. My car is really far. I think that was like a sign that she wants me to drive her to her car. So I said, I got you. Don't worry. I got you. My car is right here. Whoop, whoop. Turned on by itself like Transformers. Like that, you know what I'm saying? And it's already turning on. Yeah. And she's like, wow. That's exactly what kind of car I want. I'm like, you with the right guy right here, baby. That's it. So I'm walking with her to my car. And then she changed her mind. She's like, you know what? I just walked to my car. I'm like, girl, nah. You're already here. I'm going to take care of you. I opened the door for her. Let her in. I said, look. I got a treat. Now that I got a woman in my car, I got Why doesn't your car? Why doesn't your car open the door by itself? It turns on by itself. I mean, I don't got Tesla, you know what I'm saying? I, I haven't upgraded that much, you know what I'm saying? I, you, know, I mean, you know, a little bit here and there, but that would have been dope if I had the door open for her, you know what I'm saying, by itself. Yeah, just one um, button unlocks and opens every door. Right. <laughs> Perfect for the carjackers. Right. <laughs> so we... We get in the car, and dude, this is the funniest thing, man. No lie. So I have to reverse my car, and I put my arm around her just for an excuse to put my arm around her. So I'm reversing the car. I got my arm like this. Here's the funny part. I have a backup camera. <laughs> <laughs> so she's probably thinking, man, this fool is the dumbest guy I've ever met. <laughs> oh, he probably doesn't believe in technology. You know what I'm saying? So I got my arm like this, I'm going back. And then basically I get to her car. She's like, man, I had a great time. And I mean, I'm not lying, bro. I put my mask back on because my mac and cheese had a bunch of onions. And you know what they say, <laughs> if you have onions, your bread stinks. So I was like, oh shit. So I put it back on. And bro, we were about to kiss, but I had the fucking mask on like an idiot. So she yeah. left. And basically, I told a little girl, let me know when you get home, da di da But yeah, man, that was my story, man. Let me just... That was like a successful night at the restaurant and uh, and around. Right. At the, at the Las, good old Las Vegas, Thursday nights. Right. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's uh, really nice. Um, now, everyone wants to know, will there be a second date? There actually was. Oh, there was already. But I fucked up, bro. I fucked up. I mean, I messed up. So, part two. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Thursday night. <laughs> part two was Saturday p.m. on the dot. So I, it was Saturday night. Oh right, yeah, you guys, you guys couldn't wait. Yeah, we couldn't wait. She wanted to see me, so I said, "Uh, why not?" <laughs> uh. So. <laughs> It was 10 o'clock and she messaged me that she wanted to go to a, a, basically a dance studio party, right? Where you could dance, this and that. And I said, yeah, I'm down. But then she tell me, tells me that it got canceled. So my, my best friend, basically she has uh, her birthday the same day. And she lives like a few blocks from my crib. One of my good friends here in Vegas. So I'm like, yeah, let's go. Let's go together and celebrate it, right? Bro, I'm not lying. I mean. When I saw the girl open the door and she met me at my friend's house, I got pretty turned on, man. And I know that's some deep shit. Like, usually that doesn't happen the, 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 the day you see the person. It takes a while. Like, it could take the bathroom, you know, the bedroom. I was going to say the bathroom. I meant the bedroom. You know, things get excited. But, man, when I saw her, I was like, damn, what did she eat? Like Kanye said. What she ordered? What she ordered? Fish fillet? Like, like honestly, I was like, man, she ate steak. Matter of fact, she had steak and shake. That's what she had. A steak and shake. Because I was like, that. I, I even got hungry. My teeth kind of crumbled. Because I was, I was like, wow, like this is real. She hugged me, and I felt like I'm not lying. When she hugged me, I felt like a million bucks. Like, like it was good. And then check this out. We go there. We actually have to get the birthday cake for the birthday girl. So we go together to Cheese Factory. And we're walking together. I don't know if you've been to a restaurant. Do you like that spot? Cheesecake? Yeah. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Who hasn't been there? Yeah. 
Right. How you like it? Is it is it like your top restaurant or is is all right? It's okay. I mean, they they changed their menu recently. I'm not crazy about it. Yeah. So for me, I've only been there once. Okay. I've never gone back. It's decent. I would say it's decent. I haven't been there in, in a few years. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, brother. So we're going there, right? We're walking to Cheese Factory and watch your boy. What? Well, Got my arm around her like a boss. And she's holding just me. Just like at the car. Yeah, just like the car. But this time we're walking <laughs> to the secret of life. So we're, we're together. I'm holding her. I'm like, I got you, girl. And we're walking. I'm making a laugh. And, you know, we get into this restaurant. It's kind of tight. There's a lot of people. So when people were trying to walk by, I had to be the boss and be like, hey, girl, watch out. I had to move her a little bit, like, from her back. Hey, girl, you got to watch out. You know what I'm saying? People getting through, you know, got to do the right thing. <laughs> so we get back to the party. And I'm not lying. When we were in the car again, she gave me those puppy look. You ever saw the movie Shrek 2 when Poos does this with the boots? Yeah, yeah. Okay, she did exactly that without putting her hands up. It's just her eyes are the same. <laughs> like like she never saw a chocolate bar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or what was she thinking? You know what I'm saying? Like we don't even know what she was thinking. She, it could be explicit. Or it could be like a chocolate bar from Willy Wonka. So we just we just don't know. But I was like, all right, this is my chance. I could kiss her, right? So we get to the spot. We're doing karaoke. I don't know if you ever done karaoke, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's pretty fun. And because you try to read the, the words and we mess up, right? And bro, tell me why. I had one of my um homosexual friends, real cool guy. He was dancing with my girl, right? My date. Dancing with her. And he's like, yo, David, you got to go dance with her right now. But he's doing this. But you, <laughs> I know what he's saying it looked like he's trying to like make out with me because his mouth was opening like, and I was gonna go back like this, like doing the same back then. <laughs> and so they were playing my song, bro. Do you remember this song? Do 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 do, yeah, yeah. Do 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 do. It was like five five minutes ago. Na, 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 I said, yeah. Chris Brown, miss you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I just kept going because I was waiting for you to be like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I just kept going. <laughs> so they were playing that. We started dancing, you know, I'm rocking my hairs, moving my shoulders like the pimp, you know, pimp, just walking <laughs> with our cane like Cat Williams. And, bro, we're dancing together. I have her by my side. At this moment, I could kiss the girl, but I said next time. So I snooze, right? At the end, she's like, she got to go. I walk into her car. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, man. I had a lot of things going in my head. So when I walked her to the car, I was like, I don't think this girl's for me. Honestly, that's what, that's what came in my head. And I noticed she got a little awkward as well. Like the energy changed when we got to the car. The sad thing, bro, because I didn't make a move, the next day she sent me a text saying, um, basically, I'm in the friend zone. Oh, man. That only yeah. lasted about 40 hours. Yeah. It was, yeah, honestly. It was sad, bro. I, I'm not going to lie. It's a sad story. It's based on true events, I could say that. <laughs> like a movie. <laughs> <laughs> like a movie, yeah. Rated PG thirteen. <laughs> you know oh, one night of love became <laughs> well fizzled out after the other time. <laughs> right, right. Where one man thought this could be the one until Saturday night came. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's how you end it. <laughs> Coming soon, near you, like that. That's how we gotta end it. Like that. That's how we gotta do it. <laughs> oh man, I would totally. I'd watch that. Even though I'd know what happened, I'd, I'd watch yeah. it. I have fun. I'll move the theaters. They need business. I'll give them six dollars, whatever. There you go. There you go. Um. Anyways, yeah. Uh, what else have you been up to uh, other than? Uh, uh, but now, hold on. Are you gonna? Is it on to the next one for you? It's just. It's just. You know. You're just gonna move on like that, or are yeah. you gonna take time to settle in a little bit? Maybe do some reflection. 
I was, you know, I'm doing some reflection. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. I uh, I got last episode. You said you weren't in the strip club for in in days, and then that made it sound like it was a long time for you. (laughs) So, are you going straight back there or? (laughs) No, man, you're funny. So look, I'm I'm gonna tell you what happened, man. I I did feel kind of like bummed out because I didn't make a move, right? And this never really happens to me. This is actually the like real life. The first, first time I've ever, like, not kissed a girl on a date it usually happens all the time. Like, I, I'm not really scared to do it, but, like, this time was kind of weird that it didn't happen. And um, to be honest, I was kind of, like, butthurt because I'm like, man, this really sucks. I messed up my opportunity, right? So I called my guy. Um, you remember um, Ronnie from Take One Pass It Back, Kush? Oh, Yeah. So for those who don't know, Ronnie doesn't smoke weed at all. Even though in the show, he looks like he smokes weed every day. So the funny thing is my boy Ronnie, now in 2020, he started to smoke weed. So he became Kush in real. So he be- took that character, my boy, my be- one of my best friends, and it actually became a reality. Now he's actually Kush. When I called him up, like, 2 in the morning, I was bought her, right? I was kind of mad at myself. He goes, yeah, motherfuckers just trying to get high. That's the first thing he said. <laughs> I say, no way. He's like, man, you know, I don't really smoke weed like that. But uh, I just had to take a puff. And I'm dying laughing. And I'm telling him, bro, I need your help. I'm pissed at myself. This is what happened. I told him the whole story, right? He's like, yeah, so, so why are you mad? I'm like, I'm mad because I, I messed up. I didn't make the move. Bro, you saved your life. I said, what do you mean? Bro, she probably had COVID-19 and you were about to get it. And you know how fast it is to transmit it when you kiss a girl. Saliva mixed with saliva is bacteria. I don't know why he said it like that. And I was dying. So he's like, take it, look at it like this. You you basically protected yourself from getting infected because you don't know if she had it or not. You got to look at it like that. You're smart. But that's how he did it. Yeah. Like that. He was doing it like every pause. And then he would be like, we're talking, right? He said, wait. I just got to take these two puffs and you can hear it. Like it was loud. (laughs) And and I was like, man. And he told me that I just like, David, I got to tell you something. I just concentrate better when I smoke. So it's, it's just so cool to see my boy who for his whole life, knowing him never smoked weed ever. And now he does. It's just like, it's cool. Cause he's still my brother. And it's funny because it reminds me of when we used to rehearse for our show, how I used to have him exaggerate because he, he doesn't know how it is to be high. And now it's, we got, we got Kush back. We got him back. <laughs> he doesn't even need to act now. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, very nice. Um, so if anyone's wondering what not to do on a date, that is uh, what you shouldn't do. And that honestly is what, like, your story resonates with me because that's something that I totally do. Not make the move. Be too passive. What's wrong with you? You know, is he gay? You know, those kind of questions pop up. But nope. You know, I, I, I normally, I don't make moves. I'm too passive. I don't make moves. Um, and I've gone to the point now where I'm in a nihilistic phase where I don't care about getting a date. I don't care about scoring anything. Uh, I just want to be alive by the end of the night. And I want to get my eight hours of sleep. <laughs> hey, man, there's nothing wrong with that. I, hey, I always... <laughs> I'm totally fine with being lonely. I'm totally, like, I'm going to be in my own grave. So, like, I'm totally cool with that. But Get me be... a sanctuary. <laughs> but to be honest with you, I mean, I feel like, so this is what I found out with the secret of life. I found out... You know, girls. Let's wait for this. Let's wait for this. Right. <laughs> Basically, 
you know, there's hope for, for both of us, right? We're single people. There's always opportunities. The way I see it is that when you are in a relationship, more girls come to you because they like competition. It's the same when you get a job, right? When you get a job, more jobs, they want you. It's, it's the same concept. That's one of my, my old guys, he told me. And it makes sense because like for us, right? The best part, we could talk to any girl we want. It could be in 7-Eleven and we could be like, hey, you know what I'm saying? It could be anything. And honestly, I think the best part, because, you know, now with this all quarantine, people, they'll gravitate to us just because we're, you know, we're different. Like, for example, like you, honey, you're very, you're, I feel like, I don't know, I could be wrong, but from knowing you for, you know, a couple, it's almost, I don't even, I don't even know how long it's been we know each other since. Might be three years. Three years? Okay. Well, since three years, right? So since knowing you, I feel like you're like an extrovert, if I'm not wrong. You like to go out, you like to play basketball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, I would you're say like, you're wrong there because I am <laughs> incredible. I, I grew up so shy. Like, I grew up, like, not saying a word for years. For real? Yeah, but I was, I'm, I'm still m- very much of an observer, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. I just like to watch people. And uh, I like to think that I know I can uh, bullshit my way through conversations like right. I am right now. And uh, <laughs> I don't know. I've gotten to the point where, like, uh, there, there was a certain point where, like, I just started to, like, just not care about how other people would see me. And, you know, I guess that would uh, help me, I guess, be a little more outwardly to people, a little more expressive to people, make it seem like I am extroverted. But uh, no, I like, you know, maybe amongst like, you know, compared to some people might, might be like considered extroverted, but uh, I think I am more introverted. Um, you know, uh, I do socialize with people sometimes, but uh, I'd much rather, I mean, I do a lot of things alone. So, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. There is, um, I'm trying to see something that I was going to ask you. So like when you were little, why were you so shy? I don't know. I never really had, uh, I never really found like, uh, it was my place to say anything Yeah. at any point. Mm. Um, yeah, that, that was, uh, definitely like, uh, up until like maybe like my sophomore, junior year of high school, I was definitely one of the quiet kids and even my, you know, even some, you know, classes in university, you know, wouldn't say a word. And, uh, you know, I also wasn't like a great student or anything either. Wow. I almost get like C's. Yeah. So, do you feel like when you got part of like the the Paul iHeartRadio, like being part of that, did you feel like it gave you that extra boost, like that? Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I started doing radio probably in high school, and then I also started doing like broadcasting and stuff like that, and. Um, once I started to do that, like after the first two times, I became very comfortable behind a microphone and uh, just in general talking to people. So like, you know, all those just days and, you know, months, weeks, whatever, years of uh, putting bullshit out on the radio and no one listening to it. It really gave me a lot of confidence to just be like, yeah, I'm just going to say whatever, uh, whatever the fuck I want and uh, see what sticks, you know? And, uh, you know, I don't care if people listen. I don't care if people, you know, watch this. And I've gone to the point where I'm just going to keep saying stuff, keep releasing content that way, just by saying bullshit. And um, yeah, see, I guess uh, just see where it goes. I'm just so used to not like have people like not listening. <laughs> oh, okay. I see what you mean. I see. That's, as it's, you know, for me, like I was, um, when we talked last week, for me, I was shy in high school, but in college, I became very out there. Like I, I kept putting myself out. I don't know. I felt like college really gave me like a, a new way to, I guess, appreciate myself, right? Because honestly, like I just, people gravitate to me, right? They're like, man, he's a cool guy. He's real chill, you know, stuff like that. Funny. Um, but yeah, man, it's just, it's, it's crazy how for me, like I, when I used to be back in Chicago, right. And you remember that time you came to, you know, you came over that one time 
and we had to change your light in the oh, back. Oh, yeah, like a few months ago. Yeah, like five, six months <laughs> <Yeah>. ago. <laughs> so during that time, I actually still visit Northeastern. Like, I don't know if I told you this, but I actually took a master's class in Northeastern for free. Like, uh, because I knew the, what's it called? Not the student affairs, the chief or what's it called? Head of communications. I forgot what's that called. The, like the dean? The dean. Yeah, something, some, someone around those lines, like the chairman. Chairman oh, okay, of okay, yeah. communications. So because I, that used to be my favorite professor and I'm, I'm his favorite student, I was able to take, you know, classes. But honestly, man, like, I love college so much. Like, if I could go back right now and do, like, the movie click and get that controller, <laughs> I'll go back and I'll press the button. And honestly, I wouldn't change anything in college, to be honest. But you'd, you'd go back even though you wouldn't change anything? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I would – Um. I don't know. I feel like I'd change some things. Maybe I'd uh, accept more invitations. Okay. You know, I did uh, at least my first year. I did like deny a lot of invitations, like going to like a party or something like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I guess just like be more, um, I guess like involved, I guess, in like uh, some other like student activities. I mean, like you know, radio. Uh, I was never like uh, like anyone's boss. You know, I was always like a volunteer, so I could have gotten like paid for that. You know, just for being in the studio. And uh, I'm still kind of bitter about that because um, I didn't apply because my grades, well, my GPA, like was, I feel like it wasn't good enough. But I feel like that does, that doesn't really matter, you know, if yeah. uh, if you're going to be like a leader in the classroom or something like that. I know you have to, you know, being having good grades is preferred, but like, I don't think like that's stupid. Like assuming that like just because someone's good, like at, at like a you know like science class or something or math class doesn't mean they're going to be like a good leader or like a good like someone you should be listening to you know yeah in terms of like uh yeah i mean i guess like uh just in terms of having good like qualities of being a leader and i thought i had great qualities you know just in terms of you know like everyone knows who i am and stuff like that and uh yeah i mean i was just kind of you know i don't know you know i i've known people who like didn't apply and like got positions you know Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah. And did you still do the, I forgot to ask you this. This is like a while back, but did you ever do the WTTW after college? Oh, no, I didn't go after. I mean, I, yeah, I had like an internship there during college, but no, I didn't go after. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I should keep in touch with, I mean, I keep in touch with some of those people like through like Twitter or something like that, but. Dang, dude, that's great. That's very interesting, man. Like, it's amazing how, like, everything changed. Like, do you, and what about, do you still keep in touch with some of your friends back in college? Yeah, just, like, through some group texts and stuff like that. We're just kind of shitting on DePaul basketball or something. Yeah, um, yeah no, we do have a group chat amongst, like, uh, just, like, I, I, I'm in a group chat amongst, like, a few people. Like, a couple group chats within, like, from DePaul. Um, otherwise, yeah, I mean, like, you know, Facebook or whatever, uh, yeah. you know, I'll see what people are up to, um, yeah. Twitter. I mean, I'm still like, I keep in touch mostly with people from the radio station. So that's the thing is like, that's where I found like my circle was like people were there because we all had similar interests. Um, I didn't make any friends as a Paul for my first like year, year and a half or something because I was a transfer student and I came in like in the middle of the school year. So I was already kind of like disjointed and um, I think it was the 2015 school year, 2014, 15 school year. So I came in like the, basically the first day of 2015, like January, 2015. And um, yeah, it was a, uh, it was a weird transition because like I've already missed the first like couple of days of class because I did, I did like some orientation stuff, you know? Oh, okay. So it was just like really disjointed, like experience how I started. You know, I at at DePaul because I went to Northern Illinois before, and uh, there I just I mean all I do was just go to the gym and play basketball or work out or something, and, or and then just chill in the dorm, you know, and play Madden or something. Right, dang dude. So so uh, DePaul, did you like um at the end like your senior year? Did you feel like DePaul was like getting better? 
Like, did you go to more games? Did you like? Oh yeah, I mean, I I went to games like uh, I did. I probably did go to more because I covered more games. Yeah, my senior year, at least my last two years. And uh, honestly, um, by when I was a senior, my basically my last year there, I basically saw anyone younger than me as just kids. You know. Yeah. I got to the point where there's like you know even if it was like a like a you know like a like a freshman. Uh, or a sophomore, I'd be like, wow, that person looks like they're about 13 years old, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, like, and you, you'll see some guys who are just like salivating over some, you know, like sophomores, which is really creepy, like freshmen or sophomores. I'm just like, that person was like nine years old when I was like 14, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's weird. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, like, uh, I mean, I, I just, I, I, my my confidence was like way better like by my last two years because I just saw everyone younger than me as kids, kind of an yeah. ageist thing I know, but like I don't know, uh, it was just like I don't know, it, it was uh, it was definitely a fun time though. I mean, like I I definitely cherish those memories, you know, um, just like chilling with friends and stuff like that. Good yeah. time. Damn, bro, this is this is kind of um, this is a little bit random. But when was the first time you ever smoked? <laughs> you can be honest, bro. Yeah. The the puff puff. Poof poof. Probably when I was like uh seventeen. Oh wow. So you were like a junior, right? A senior, yeah. Senior? Yeah. It was like my first like month of senior year. And how do you remember how it, your first experience, like how it was? Yes, uh, I was. Um, <laughs> Don't be basement. sweating. Don't start sweating. <laughs> it's in my cousin's basement. It's probably like midnight, and um, we. Uh, I think we uh, did did it out of out of bong. And um, I remember taking two hits and. Uh, Five minutes later, I couldn't even remember what I was thinking. Like, you know, before, you know, yeah. like I couldn't even remember what I was thinking. Like, you know, even like after I, you know, took the, you know, the first hit or whatever. But um, I was, you know, just kind of, you know, drooping in and, and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I was just uh, very confused for a good like five minutes. I was like, oh, wow, this is what it's like. And then about two hours later, I went back home. <laughs> oh, wow. I was driven home. Yeah. Oh, you were driving home, okay. By my cousin, did, yeah. Did you feel kind of like everything was going really slow? Yes. Yes, and uh, I mean, like, you know, my cousins were, like, you know, in some other conversation, and I was just like, wait, what are we talking? Like, you know, wait, what did they say? Like, <laughs> like, wait, did I miss something? You know, like, <laughs> uh, did someone, did, you know, did someone do something to the air here? Like, <laughs> oh, man, it's funny. And did you like, do you remember like if you got the munchies? No, no, I did not. Um, I, uh, it was just a lot of paranoia. <laughs> oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. Like you saw a lot of ghosts and stuff like coming out? No, of no, no, just like a lot of like mental, you know, just like a lot of mental shit. Like, oh my God. You know, like, oh, what the parents find out? oh my God, like, oh, so, so, you know, like that kind oh. of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm like way better with it now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like I just I you know, a couple puffs, shoot around. Let's play some basketball. You know, let's do so. You know, let's play some disc golf. You know. Oh man, you're funny, man. Yep. For me, my first time was actually, uh, I was 23 or 22, and I went to California with Kush, Ronnie, the, the one I was talking about. Yeah. So I went with him and my cousin, one of my close cousins, and we went to Cali for a whole week, rented a Chrysler 300 and got a nice hotel at LAX. And basically we were there for the week, but I said to myself, what happens in Cali stays in Cali. <laughs> and so I found out that one of my like good friends lived in Cali and uh, we actually met up 
And I was like, look, bro, before we meet up, I really, 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 really want you to bring me some good shit to smoke. Like, I want that weed, that kush, kush, bang, bang, ski, ski. I want all that good stuff. So he gave it to me, and I, I actually smoked it, right? I went, <laughs> like, almost like Jason, you know, for <laughs> Friday the 13th. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And I started smoking. And I remember, dude, like it was yesterday. We smoked at the park. I forgot which park we were at. And honestly, man, I felt so chill. I laughed a lot. It actually gave me the same side effect um, when you're tipsy. So, like, I, I know how many you, you don't drink. I don't know if you ever did. But, like, when you drink, right, you take, like, three or four shots or maybe three beers your body feels really kind of laid back, like real chill. You feel tired. It's the same. For me, it's the same effect as we, just for me. And everybody says it's a little different, but honestly, it's the same shit. It's just, honestly, it's just the thing is, liquor is more dangerous because, you know, there's drunk driving, all that stuff. Uh, and sometimes you can lose control, but we, I, I really feel like you don't have it as bad. But they did say, like, according to studies, that people that smoke weed and they drive, um, they fail the basically the the exam. There was an exam to see if weed was worse than liquor, right? And they had two people under the influence, and like they gave them like a little trail, right, like cones, and they had to park it right, pass it. There's a stop sign, kind of like a driving test, and actually both failed. <laughs> I think I remember seeing that one uh, that like uh, something about like weed was like safer or something like that. Yeah, I mean it could it could be, or they're just like more aware of like the surrounding. I don't know something like that. But. Right, right. Because here's the thing too. Sometimes if you smoke weed, I don't know if this happens to you, but I, what I've heard is that sometimes people that smoke like really really strong or they did a lot of like hits, they get really sleepy. So let's say you fall asleep while you yeah. drive, you kill somebody. Because you knocked out. <laughs> you didn't wake up. You know, yeah, and then you, you crash, right? So it's it's very, you got to watch out. Because some people, I know a few people in my life that actually do it just because they have PTSD and they, or they just can't sleep because they think a lot and there's a lot of things going in their brain. But when they smoke, it calms them down and they fall asleep like a baby. Yeah, that's that's a very common one. Uh, also, it's good for like recovery and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I I think it's better, much better than liquor. Yeah. Um, Have you ever tried it? Liquor? Yeah, yeah. I've had, yeah, I've I've had liquor before. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> what um, you think of it from from for you? Because I'm curious to know. Because I know it's like really different, especially if you didn't grow up drinking. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not not a huge fan of liquor anymore, like hard liquor or anything. I I just have like like beer or whatever. Okay, okay. So you you you'll go with Corona or? <laughs> Honestly, yeah, sure, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> give me all of the Corona. All right, all right. We got we got a few stuff. Uh, we got some shipment coming through, <laughs> uh, from from Colombia. They're coming through. <laughs> oh man. Um. But yeah, uh, otherwise, like um, as uh, effective as hard liquor is, I don't think it's just it's just it just doesn't seem like very good for you, just in general. Yeah, uh, I always call alcohol poison. So <laughs> no, I agree with you. I think it's really it's not. Um, I mean, it can be addiction for those who use it for escaping like pain um it does have a lot of side effects that's one thing like that's that's one thing i i really appreciate like you know especially you know in in islam they're very strict of you know not having liquor. like i have a friend he's from morocco one of my close friends he cannot be and, and everyone's different right for him like there was days i couldn't invite him to my house because i had liquor around he said, if there's a liquor at one, it could be even like a shot. 
or somewhere, right? If he saw it, he'd walk out of the house right away mm -hmm. because he feels like I'm putting myself in that circumstance, right? Or that situation. And it's interesting too, because I have another friend that actually was an alcoholic and he was, he, dude, this guy would drink every day, honey. Like every day, before working out, after working out, before going to bed, going to sleep. But this guy was like G.I. Joe. Like he was strong, like fit. And I never seen a man drunk. And it says in the sauna, you're not supposed to go in if you're under the influence of liquor. He still did it. And dude, he worked out almost every day. And that's hard I, to do. <laughs> yeah, very hard. I can't do it. Solid guys. Right. And he'll hit the you do that. bench. Yeah. But he's drunk because you got to understand this. When you're drunk, dude, you, don't, you do not feel like things are heavy because you're drunk. So it feels like light and you're, it's messing with your brain. Yeah. So I'm seeing him doing so many big weights and this and that. And one thing, like now that he's out of, you know, being an alcoholic, he said that for him, he cannot be – like he cannot go in any bars. He can't go to any friend's house to the same thing. Like if there's liquor, he just can't come in because for him is a temptation to go relapse. You Makes know what I'm sense. saying? You know what I'm saying? So I thought that was really interesting how two different worlds, but in a way it's very similar, like of staying away in those environments, you know? Yeah. Just uh, being aware of what uh, what you, what you got around you, basically. Yeah. Um, and it, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was just gonna say like there's a little story that we have. I think you're gonna like it. It's uh so we have this little uh book that we read in, in the Jewish faith. It's called the Midrash, which is like parables. That's what it means, parables. And there's a parable of Noah when Noah was uh you know the guy with the ark. Yeah. He brought all those animals. So there's a part where he he actually meets Satan. And basically he's about to Satan tells Noah, you want to help me make an uh wine. And so they get the vineyards and everything they need. And there's like a big pot. And the first pot they put is actually uh a lamb. And then the second cup that they fill in is basically a monkey, a lion, and then a pig. And they mix it, right? So we have a saying that when you drink a cup of beer, right? Or one beer, you feel like a lamb. You're really chill. And then when you drink two or three cups, you feel like a monkey. You want to start dancing. You know, yeah, let's party. Party rock. Everybody's going to have tonight. You know, you just feel good. And then the third cup, you feel like a lion. So you feel like, man, nobody can touch me. I'm the shit. I could bench 500. You're pine. You, you know, you want to do something? Come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's when your pride gets up. And the fourth one, you're going to love this, the fourth cup. You act like a pig. You start throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. I think that parable is so realistic because it kind of shows, like, what are the stages? Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting way to put it, like, stages of drunkenness. Yeah. So nice. Um, well, that's going to do it for uh, this edition. Episode 12, this was. Scoop one. Um, that's Dave Montalvo. I'm Hami Rain. Thanks for listening, guys. And uh, we'll see you next time.